My name is John Patrick McKenna. I am Mormon. I grew up Mormon. I am a student at BYU. I'm actually a senior. I'll graduate very shortly, but I'm a media music major and I'm gay. Um, I, I grew up in Utah most of my life and I grew up LDS. Um, my parents were LDS. My sister was LDS and um, I kind of, I, I knew I was different very, very early on, and in fact, my parents actually told me a few weeks ago when I came out to them that they knew that I was different right off the bat. They said, you know, there's something different about John. He's unique. He's special. He has different talents, different interests than most boys his age, and they knew that they had something on their hands, and I'm, it probably, I don't know if it scared them. I don't know what it did, but they knew they had something to deal with. Anyway, growing up, Mormon or growing up Mormon and gay in Utah is not, it's not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it for anybody. Um, but I honestly feel like it's made me a stronger person. But I feel like it kind of sucks sometimes. And that's, that's, that's the way life is kind of in general. It sucks sometimes. Elementary school sucked really bad. High school sucked really bad. Junior high sucked really bad. And it's not because it's not because I was openly gay because I wasn't. And it's not because I f even felt like I should label myself as gay. It's because I had different interests. I liked music. I liked theater. I liked art. I liked things that I didn't like sports. I hated sports and all the other boys liked sports and I hated it and my parents kind of they I mean they supported that and stuff but they but all the students they would they would call me names they'd call me a girl in elementary school they called me a girl every single day and I hated it because I wasn't a girl and I I just liked different things and then in junior high when they started getting more mature they started calling me gay and I just thought well I'm not you know I'm not gay I like girls I have girlfriends I never really thought about being attracted to boys yet. Um, but then once high school came around and they still were calling me gay, I thought to myself, you know, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I still kind of wish you would stop calling me this. But um, towards the end of my sophomore year in high school, I actually started to realize, you know what, maybe I am attracted to guys. And, you know, I was. And I started to realize, okay, now what? I'm Mormon in Utah. And I'm at a high school where people, even if they don't know that I'm gay, they still think gay is a horrible thing and they're using that as, a, as, a, as an awful name to call me and a way to put me down. So of course I wasn't gonna come out to anybody. And that really, really, really sucked. Every single day it sucked. Even my closest friends, I couldn't tell that to. And, and a few times I tried to tell, that, tell them that you know I've, had these experiences or I've done these different things and they flipped out and then I just had to say, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I, I, was, I was joking. But I've, con and, and then, they, then they were like, okay, are you sure, John, are you sure? And that kind of sucks. It sucks to feel like you can't talk to anybody. It sucks to feel like you can't, you have nowhere to turn, that there's no outlet for anything that you feel inside. I really empathize with, with those who feel like they have nowhere to turn to, they have nobody to talk to, they have nowhere to go, and they feel like there's no way out. And I felt like that for probably almost 10 years. I didn't, I didn't feel like I could talk to my friends, I didn't feel like I could talk to my family, and every time I tried to, they would flip out. Even my sister, who I was really, really close to, is when I tried to tell her, she would think I was kidding. For about 10 years, she didn't believe me. I would say, look, I have a crush on this boy, or look, I have, um, or look, this is my boyfriend. And, she, and I would even like introduce them to my sister and she would just laugh. She'd be like, ha ha ha, John, I, you know, that's funny. And it's fun. I mean, not even, it wasn't even until, I mean, I'm 26 now and it wasn't until maybe three or four months ago that I, I sent her a picture of a boy that I was interested in. And she said, John, are you serious? Are you really gay? And I'm just like, why didn't you ever believe me? And she's, she said, um, she's like, because you always said it so funny. And I was like, I, I mean, I didn't really understand what that meant because I was very serious and I was just trying to be casual about 
the way I introduced that to her, but she, um, I don't know, she finally believed me. It was just kind of a funny experience that I had. Um, but I know for 10, for 10 years of my life, from when I was 15 until probably about a year ago, I hated myself. I hated who I was. And I don't, and I didn't, I don't really know, I didn't really know why that whole time. Does it get better? Um, you know, life is a roller coaster. It's different for everybody. It's always up and down. And if it's not up and down, that means something's wrong. If you're always happy all the time, then there'd be no point in being here. And if you're always sad all the time, there'd also be no point in being here. And I know from my experiences, from 10 years of being in the closet, um, it can really, really suck. And it can feel like there's no way out. And I felt many, many, many times that there was nothing else to do but die. But standing outside of that place in my life right now, looking back at what, those times when I felt that way, there's, I mean, what, like dying doesn't do anything. All that does is m make you stop living and it, it, it's basically, you're not only shutting out the awful things, you're also shutting out any opportunity of ever, I don't know, achieving your dreams. There will always be bad and there will always be good in your life. And in everybody's life, nobody is exempt from bad times, hard times, stress, frustration, and overwhelming circumstances. No single person in this world is exempt from that. Um, but wanting to die, that's just like wanting to never feel the bad things. And it's also wanting to never feel the good things and refusing to accept that they could ever that things could ever get better. And the thing is, they always do. If, you're, if you think you've hit rock bottom and you're in the worst place that you could ever be, the only place that you could get is better. Or the, only, the, only, the only direction you could go is up. And I know that that happens because it happened to me. I dealt with severe, intense depression for 10 years. And I thought, life would I, would, I was never happy, and I thought life would never get better. And people, I lost, I lost a lot of friends because they just didn't want to be around me because I just wasn't happy. It was a chore to smile. It was a chore to laugh. And very, very few things in life brought me any kind of satisfaction. And I didn't love myself. I didn't, I didn't love anything about life. Um, and then finally, after a long time, I just realized that the most important thing that I could ever do is to learn to love myself. Because if you learn to love yourself, you'll always be loved. And that is one of my favorite concepts. And when I started to love myself and recognize, you know what, I don't have to be anything that I don't want to be. I just want you to know more than anything in the world that it gets better and that there's no reason, no reason, even though it may seem really, this idea or concept may seem really confusing to you, but there's no reason you shouldn't love yourself with all of your energy because you are a, a human being that can contribute and leave a, a legacy that no one else can touch. You, there's nobody else that can be you as well as you can. There's nobody else that has the same interests, that has the same talents, that has the same ideas. Can you imagine if, I don't know, if people, I mean, there's nobody, like all the great minds of this world, all the people who have, I don't know, contributed to the great, great parts of our, of our everyday life, people like, like Walt Disney, people like, I don't know, like Steve Jobs, people who, who faced a lot of opposition but they kept going. I mean, if these people hadn't been around, think of the, our quality of life would be so much different today. And there's no reason in the world why you aren't as unique and individual and can't contribute just as many spectacular and unique individual things to this world that this world doesn't need. This world absolutely needs you. There is a place for you. There will always be a place for you in this world. and. You know, who knows, you may be 
standing where I am someday, encouraging people struggling in our situation, being gay and people in the same situation, being gay and Mormon. It sucks, but you know what? It's gonna get better. And the older you get, of course, the more you learn and the, the more experiences you have that will change your opinions and change your ideas and help you be stronger. Um, it, it's okay. It's okay, sometimes time just has to keep going and sometimes it takes a lot of it, but it gets better. And that's kind of the bottom line.